one exiting Charlie, go to Heritage. Sports 01, Boston Ground. Type to Heritage via Charlie. For thunderstorms in the New England area, monitor flight service frequencies for more information. Advise on initial contact, you have information alpha. Burlington Airport, information alpha 1454, Zulu observation, winds variable at 5, visibility 10, sky conditions, few clouds at 4,500, 900,500 scattered, temperature 25, 2.17, altimeter 3018. So this is something they don't have in Long Beach. Those are snow plows, man. So those are big brushes. They take the, they run them down the runway, kind of wow. offsets to the side. I don't think I've and, ever seen that. Yeah, and it it brushes like right down to bare. It's quite a machine. That is quite a machine. Yeah. Eight seven zero whiskey pop. We're on the beacon ramp. Information alpha. Um, or VFR to the northeast, going up to Newport today for a VFR flight. Service 70 Whiskey Papa, departure frequency 121 for one squad 0212. 1211 and 0212, 870 Whiskey Papa, and we're ready to taxi. Service uh, 0 Whiskey Papa, Roger, runway 19, taxi via Alpha, and uh, you're going to be behind a Airbus on Alpha, they'll be taxiing momentarily. Okay, well, 1-9 via Alpha, and we'll watch for the Airbus. We have it in sight. It's up there with the spot. Interestingly, he didn't tell us to hold short. Which yeah. Kind of. It is kind of. Kind of important. So there's the charging infrastructure for that beta vehicle that goes up on the top, and those are all batteries ensnared. That's what charges the batteries. Wow. So you land it on top. So you got to put one of those at every airport in the country, and I think they're different for different airplanes. Zero zero whiskey pop. Runway one five at Alpha. Line up and wait. Line up and wait. One five at Alpha. Eight seven zero whiskey pop. Ever fifty twenty seven right Bravo cross runway one nine er. Left on course, cleared for takeoff, runway 15870, Whiskey Pop. Delta 2538, so beta facilities down, down there on the right, right for that one seat. Delta 2538. Uh, Airspeed's alive. Engine instruments are in the green. Looking for 77. This is beta right over here, right? Coming up. Wow. Turn right, heading 190, runway 15, quick takeoff. Right, 190, runway 15, quick takeoff, about 2538. 00, Whiskey Papa, contact departure, good day. Over to departure, 80, Whiskey Papa, thanks. Burlington departure, Cirrus 870, Whiskey Pop, uh, 1200 for 5500, uh, Newport. Service 870 Whiskey Papa, Burlington departure radar contact, it's in a course in Newport. On course, 870 Whiskey Papa. So this is IBM, what used to be IBM here. That was the economic engine for northern Vermont. And that little town there is the town of Essex, that's the town I grew up in. So now it's, IBM has sold it to a company called Global Foundries. How long has that been? I don't know, maybe like five years or something like that. So the mountain we can't really see is Mount Mansfield over here to the right. It's hoping we get some separation in the clouds, but 
Those are the green mountains. So you can see the ridge line in the yeah. back. There's a hiking trail called the Long Trail that is uh, It's a hell of a hike. It's about a 28-day hike. You go from the Massachusetts border to the Canadian border. Now Over here is a restricted three, four, five, area. Three, four, five, so the reason it's eight, restricted eight, is uh, right there. See that blue thing? Yeah. So that's a firing range. So ah. my first job out of college, I worked there every day firing the Gatling gun of the A-10. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we fire into the side of the mountain. Uh, fired probably a million rounds there. Mm. Yeah, you could Six, hear it easily seven, uh, at the airport. Five. So this is flying in Vermont, a little different than flying in Scottsdale. Yeah. You know, basically no traffic. Uh, basically the terrain is the opposite extreme, and this yeah. is just covered in woods. Covered in woods. So my dad was the one that, you know, got me interested in aviation. He was a private pilot. He flew, you know, a 152, and uh, so at 17, you know, I, I took my first flight lesson in a 150 at that place I was telling you about, and uh, it wasn't much of a flight school. Yeah. And I lasted one flight, and then I ran out of money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I had the time, the desire, but not the money. Yeah. And then later in life, took them lessons again, and I had the money and the desire, but not the time. time. Yeah. And then finally, about uh, six years ago, I took it up and when? had all three. When was the mid middle time? I was about 40. I was yeah. running. I was running Polaris, so I was very busy. We had three little kids. Yeah, it's and, tough. Uh, so it was. Uh, it's tough. I found myself. I, I soloed. I got about 30 hours, and I got in the airplane one day, and I was thinking about work, and I was like, man, yeah. that's that's probably not a great. Point six eleven to maintain three. Not a great recipe. Yeah. Uh, and so, I I put it down until I retired, and then. Uh, you know, just always wanted to have the freedom to fly, the, you know, the challenge of learning. And uh, so I, I started out and I hooked up with a bunch of very experienced guys who were really helpful in uh, guiding me. Yeah. And I uh, started out in a Cirrus SR-20 because I always knew I wanted to eventually move up to a jet and so really learning the G1000 and avionics and stuff and my wife liked the parachute idea a lot and so did the primary in that and then an instrument training in uh, an SR22T just like this and uh, then when I finished that I bought this airplane and when I bought it I was looking for the best used uh, G5 SR22T in the country and looked at probably 50 of them. Did you really? Yeah, looked at a bunch of airplanes and bought this one and it only had 275 hours on it. I uh, bought it in 2000. The guy was a, an older gentleman and I've owned it since then. Um, so I put about, personally put about 800 hours on it. Going and through the logbooks, it seems like this airplane's really hasn't had a lot of uh, recurring maintenance or just looks like mostly routine stuff. You know, you always get the little stuff here and there, but is that generally your experience? Yeah, reliable? Yeah, exactly. You know, we, we take a very proactive approach, right? We, we it's got every upgrade you can have on the airplane. Uh, and, you know, if a tire's got a little wear on it, we replace it. Yeah, I mean, we just... Uh, the, the battery shows a little sign of maybe not cranking quite as fast. Uh, we replace it, so we've upgraded the starter. We've upgraded the uh, landing light, and other than that, it's just the uh, absolute top of the line G5. Yeah, and uh, it's, been, it's been just a dream to own. Uh, that was new. I wanted to try jets, and then I met you and. Uh, you convinced me I'd be able to learn to fly an M2, and so I've been doing that the last uh, couple of years. I had both airplanes, and uh, it's just not practical uh, at this point to have two airplanes and take care of two and all that sort of yeah. stuff. But uh, it'll make somebody a fantastic airplane. But this, this uh, you know, Sirius, I've said it many times how, you know, this airplane just absolutely captured the market, you know? Wow, wow that is some spectacular cloud cover. Isn't it? Yeah, man. This is Vermont, man. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's kind of breathtaking. When you, did you decide you were going to get a Cirrus before you 
actually got your license, when I, you knew yeah, that was an airplane? Yeah, when I um, got serious and six years ago and decided that, that you know, I wanted to, I, I wanted to seriously pursue flying, um, I, I contacted a few guys that were very knowledgeable and uh, one of them was our chief pilot at Polaris, Brian Barber, he had about 20,000 hours and a, a few people like that and just yeah. asked them, you know, if you're not, if your primary thing you're worried about is safety, not quite as concerned about purchase price and uh, that kind of thing, and you want to eventually be able to fly a jet, what should you learn on? And, you know, at that time, there were some people that were six-pack people, yeah. and there's nothing in the world wrong. Uh, but their advice was to really get grounded in a G1000 yeah. environment. Yeah. And so that's kind of, I think that's, that's, really, that's what I learned flying. Really good advice. And you know, I've always had the parachute, so my wife, who's not in aviation, always liked that that aspect of it. And uh, so we flew across the country in this plane 10 times, uh, you know, Arizona to Vermont. Um, and just did all had all kinds of fun with this plane. Ben. My my wife's been in a lot of different airplanes uh, in the 30 years we've been married, and we did a. I think I told you about it. We did a round the country trip in a Cirrus that we hadn't really done before. Spent that much time, and she she absolutely loved it and thought this is one of the most comfortable airplanes this size. You know that you can get in. Yep. Oh, that was interesting coming from her. Yeah. There's, there's a it, it really is. It really is. Yeah. There's there's a reason that. Uh, and approach. Yeah. That, that they've sold so many. Exactly. Yeah. I I, I agree with that 100%. You know. You so, say, I mean, there's some some critics out there, but you know, point to the market and look at the market acceptance and the traction that they've got and the success they've had. That doesn't happen unless you have a special airplane. This is a 2016 SR-22 G5 with essentially all the options you can get. TKS, air conditioning, all the avionics upgrades, including the EVS camera. Uh, you, you and I talked about the, I think it's a GRS-56, is that right? The text, text. And yep, this yep. Has, you, you can text from this airplane. And that's something you really grew to appreciate over time. Yep, yep, it was nice to be able to communicate with my wife. You know, I'm 20 minutes out or whatever. Yeah. And uh, just so she knew everything was good. Yeah. Right, so and, safety. And I, I have noticed in the last probably couple years that that's been something that's been more and more and more popular. And I think a lot of it's driven by Cirrus offering it at least as an option and a lot of people getting used to it saying, you know, actually it works pretty good. And uh, you can also make calls, is that right? Or is it just... You can, you know, I've tried, um, you know, you're trying to fly and call at the same time. It's a little too much. It's a little too much, and, the, and honestly, the phone quality is is okay. It's not great. Yeah. So, in an emergency situation, it's better than nothing. Yeah. But I wouldn't use it to, you know, egg pick up a. We, we text. Yeah. And that works. That's fine. That, yeah, that's, that's fine. fine. Yeah. Uh, um, and I, I have. You kind of called me on it. I've always said, you know, in a airplane in this class, I, I don't know that I'd be flying in ice too much. And almost all of these airplanes have the TKS system on. But you pointed out, you know, come fly with me a little bit in Vermont, and let's see what you think about the uh, de ice package or an anti ice package like this. Right. So if you're going to fly in New England year-round, uh, you're going to learn to deal with ice, yeah. or you're going to be driving a lot. Yeah. And like anything with flying, it deserves respect, a considerable respect. But this airplane is very capable. Uh, I've flown it in a wide variety of icing conditions. And, uh, you know, for light and moderate uh, icing, it's certified for that. And uh, I feel completely safe. Yeah. Um, Cirrus offers an icing training course, which was terrific. And we've got, got a lot of practical experience from other pilots. And, you know, kind of walk before you run. Kind yeah. of thing, like anything yeah. in aviation, yeah. right? Just, just take your time. You don't need to... Uh, head into some it, yeah. crazy situation, but um, yeah, the airplane has never let me down. And see, that's really practical experience that, quite honestly, and all the flying I've done in my life, I just don't have. 
You know, I yep. I have not operated in those conditions. Uh, uh, the the right down probably what what you have, even in this short time, you know, six years yep. compared to thirty, you yep. know, five plus years I've been flying. Um, you know, so that's a that's about as good a practical experiential statement that anybody can make. Because you're, I know you'd be very conservative, very thoughtful in your flight planning. Uh, you know, you're not the kind of guy that's going to just, you know, jump up and figure out you're in icing conditions after the fact. Nope. So that, coming from you, that, that says something. Uh, this airplane has, I, I went through the logs this morning, complete logs by reputable shops. Clearly, it's it's got everything it, it's ever needed and probably then some. Uh, it's in what I consider excellent condition relative to the year and the time that's on it. And I see a lot of airplanes. And I don't say that because it doesn't do me any good to say that and then somebody shows up to look at it and then they're disappointed. Um, and I think, if I remember correctly, it's like 1,100, close to 1,200 hours uh, on flight time. It's, it's, it's in excellent condition. Nobody would be disappointed when they show up and look at it. You can see the lake now, Rich. Oh, so it's starting over oh, here yeah, to the right. Yeah, yeah. So it's about 120 miles long. You can go out of the north end, you can go to Montreal. And out of the south end of the lake, you can go to New York City, which people do very frequently in boats. Beautiful. Burlington Approach, Sirius 870, Whiskey Papa. We are uh, 25 miles to the north with Bravo inbound full stop. Sirius 870, Whiskey Papa, first squawk 0236. The Burlington Altimeter 3017. Squawk 0236 and 3017. 870, Whiskey Papa. So a lot of history here generally. So like our town was, was created in 1762. Yeah. So before there was a country. Yep. And this lake, major lake for uh, Revolutionary War and the War of 1812. Were it not for Vermonters, we wouldn't be a country. Cirrus, uh, Zero Whiskey Papa, your radar contact 20 miles north of Burlington. Make sure you enter runway 19 or zero five Bravo and your 4000. 19 and we have Bravo and 4000. It's Zero Whiskey Papa. So as a kid, yeah, I grew up on this lake, Rich. Uh, we're going to fly over a section called Mallet's Bay, and that we had a camp on there. And so I was a wet rat. I, I uh, was yeah, in the water bet. almost every day. So this, we're seeing probably 25 miles of it, yeah, and it goes 115. So we're seeing a quarter of the lake or something. That's amazing. Like that. Yep. I had no idea it was that big. Yep. Get some pretty good uh, storms. We do. I'll show you. On the <laughs> water? Get down to the house, you'll see. Yeah, we, we've had four major storms this year. So over here, I mean, you just barely see it, but uh, Plattsburgh Air Force Base is right over. Oh, okay. Way, way over across. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. heading 276, so right there. Yep. You can just see like that long green thing. Yep. That's a 12,000 foot runway. They had B-52s there. The base has been closed, but it's a practice airport for us. Wow. So I... I do. Whiskey Papa, make sure you're in runway 19, contact tower 118.3. Straight in for 1-9 and over to Tower 1835 uh, Whiskey Pop. Burlington Tower, Cirrus 870 Whiskey Pop, uh, straight in 1-9, full stop. We have uh, Bravo. Bravo Burlington Tower, continue running 1-9er. Continue 1-9er, Zero Whiskey Pop. How about little airports? Are there airports out on any of these little sure, there are. grass strips? Or yeah. are they grass strips? Yeah, yeah. I'm like this regard. There's an you airport in South Hero. There's an airport. There's, I don't know. There's a dozen airports right around Burlington, little grass strips. Now let's uh, get ready to land an airplane here. Booster mixture flaps and landing light. Heat Tango X ray, turn right heading 100. Zero. So there's the city right of Burlington down there. So the, the hospital and University of Vermont is up on the hill, and then the city goes down to the right to the water.